I'm just going to turn it like this. And I'm going to do my bend. So hey guys, Maridi again here from Skyve and as usual we are out in the farm, out and about and we are going to showcase to you something today. Uh, so today we have a solar submersible pump. We have done another solar submersible pump with a 50 max head. Uh, the head of that was 50, 50 meters, but this, this is uh, 70 meters and something else, this comes with a controller. So guys, I'm going to demonstrate to you how this particular pump works and I'm also going to do that particular demo and everything, show you how we are going to do that. Eh? So stay with me as I do the demo. So in the pump, straight up, you get some, uh, uh, these are some tapes. You get some tapes here, some, uh, what do you call this? You get some thread tape. You also get some solar connecting, what do you call them, some jacks. Eh? And now this is very different from the other one. You get a solar controller. And actually this particular controller, as you can see here, uh, this controller is rated to about 14 to 11, 11 volts up to 55 volts, eh? as you can see there. And it's actually direct, direct connections. As you can see, the cables are really easy to connect. And also it comes with a particular... Uh, this particular setup over here, this particular, what do you call them, some jacks, eh, whereby you can be able to connect your, your float switch. Eh? So it has an on and off button, as you can see there. And these are the connection cables. I'm going to show you how that works. Uh, after you get the pump itself, this is actually the packaging that comes with it. Very nice, very perfectly packed. So there is a pump, the pump itself. And actually comes with directions on how to exactly connect it. So you can never go wrong and also take note of this particular attention over here. Eh? When you're dealing with solar or DC products, you should always make sure that your priorities are perfectly connected. So guys, I'm going to do a demo on this and show you how to connect it, how it works and all that. But remember, I'm not a very good plumber. I'm not a very good plumber. So definitely my plumbing skills are near zero. So definitely don't, uh, maybe don't copy my plumbing skills. So with this, I'm going to use an external thread tape over here. So I've used the cheapest maybe materials for the demo. These are not actually the right materials to use when doing uh, this sort of plumbing. And actually, this is not the actual way to do it. As you can see, I'm only I'm actually doing it with my bare hands. Eh? Not even using something like a pipe wrench to do the fitting and such. Eh? Just using my hands, since this is a demo only, that will be sufficient. And then I'm going to use uh, a pipe, and I'm going to draw water from that particular... This will act as my reservoir, eh? and then I'm going to return it back. Since actually I'm not supposed to do any demo with this particular kind of pumps, without them uh, maybe running them dry. Eh? Remember this pump is supposed to be cold. Eh? supposed to be cooled by the water that is pumping so definitely you're not supposed to run it to let it ever run dry eh, to be specific eh? so let me do let me get a pipe so guys what i want to do is to remember i'm going to submerge this maybe put it a max head of about here i'm going to fit that there
Aber sehr lazima. So with this demo, what I've done, I want to fold this particular tube. So I've just filled it with sand. Just done a lot of sand, with a lot of sand. So I want to do a bend right over here. I've got some fire over here. So I'm just going to turn it like this. And I'm going to do my bend. And I'm going to have like a nice clean bend as you can see. Right there. Like that. I can even somewhat on there. And I've gotten a bend. It's not all that clean yet, but it's good to go. Let me remove the sand. These kind of pipes are no longer used in the water industry. In most cases, uh, we have the green ones these days. Eh? But uh, for the demo purposes, this will work perfectly for us. So what we want to do is to get the water in from that side and uh, let it flow back on that side. So I'm also going to do a bend right here. So what I'm going to do is to add a little bit of some sand so that I get a clean, a clean bend. So I do some fire over here. So guys, what you're going to do is to connect this particular panel. Let me do the unboxing of the panel. So this particular pump uses uh, uses 275 watts panel, 24 volts to be exact. But here we'll have we have them in 300, which is not usually a problem. So the panel, this is how it looks like. So we're just going to connect the panel uh, from this particular terminal to here, and then we're good to go. So this particular uh, pump usually comes with this particular size of a cable. So when you're going, when you're purchasing this, remember to buy also uh, a 2.5 mm cable so that you're able to dip it down into your well. And also note that uh, you also need maybe a good cable so that you can be able to get it up to the, to the controller over here. Remember it's marked, so every time you're going to connect it, always note the plurality of this. But since I don't need it deep, that much deep, I'm just going to use uh, the current, uh, current cable. So you do the blue for blue. And then the green also. And the yellow. Okay, like that. So these ones are going to the solar, to the solar panel. And everything is actually labeled perfectly over here. So you cannot be able to miss anything. Eh?
so guys this is a setup so definitely i know your well is much deep so you'll need like a very big cable for this i've told you maybe the right the right size of the cable and then the connection of this is very easy straightforward very straightforward uh, since this particular control has an on and off button and uh, this is where we said you can always connect your flow switch here and uh, these are your pv cables to the to the solar panel eh? and uh, this is very well color color coded so you can never go wrong with that so with this it's just a matter of connecting all the cables you should always start with a neutral cable always start with a neutral one and then the live like that so there's a panel itself you can see the cables are coming from the panel like that and i think with that it's just a matter of turning it on and off uh, turning it on like that we should be getting water in a few minutes like that So actually this can run there indefinitely as long as the sunlight is always running as long as the sunlight this will always be running uh, although i know evaporation will take out away the water but uh, this can run there indefinitely this is just a matter of turning it on once you turn it on and actually if it had some water in the system it won't take long until you get some water over there like that and you will always notice when you have some shade when you have some shade on the solar panel the volume of water usually decreases but when the solar panel is very clear and it's very sunny you will get the pressure of the water will actually increase but the good the good thing is that uh, this will work with any range so if the solar panel is giving from 11 volts to around uh, from even 11 volts it will be able to work it doesn't mean that when there's completely no sun that it won't work or if the intensity of the sun is not that much it won't work it will still work eh? although the pressure won't be as much as when the sun is shining uh, strong eh? so guys i've seen uh, i've shown you the demo how this particular pump uh, works with the controller and everything there but you didn't get to, to talk a little bit about the product so this particular submersible pump has a maximum head of 70 meters and uh, an outlet of 22 mm that is a uh, three quarter uses 24 volt uh, solar panel uh, 24 volt uh, power dc the input is 24 volt so it can be from uh, the batteries or the solar panel any can do uses a 75 watts panel so you can do a 300 panels without without any problem something else worth noting is that this is able to do the, the flow rate the maximum flow rate is 1.2 uh, cubic meters per uh, per hour but also something else that is worth to note is that remember when you increase the head the flow rate usually decreases so you should always take note of that but in this case since the maximum head is 70 meters you will also get the, the maximum flow rate to be almost the same the 1200 uh, liters per, per hour but it's always good if you're buying a pump for commercial use it's always good to know the curve of that particular pump it's usually a, a graph uh, a graph in most pumps whereby you will always denote the uh, the, flow, the flow rate at the bottom and the head on the uh, this particular end of the graph eh? and you'll be able to know every time you increase the head like what is the flow rate of that particular pump that is how you usually read that particular curve eh? it's always good to know all those kinds of uh, uh, the outputs because in some areas if you are doing a pump for commercial use you should always know maybe the kind of or the amount of water that you need for every hour or for every use or for every day you should always get that uh, note that in mind also you should also note if you're using the solar panels directly without using a battery remember like for instance right now when the sun goes down the flow rate is usually very small as you can see this water doesn't have any kind of pressure at all since the sun has just subsided so you should always take note that maybe if you're approximating to have maybe like in a full day you should maybe do a calculation of maybe having 
five maybe to four hours with a spam five to four hours of full sunlight so that that is when you will maybe be able to maximize the, the flow rate so you should always take so take note of those kind of uh, considerations when you're buying the buying a pump so you go we always get this question maybe like will it take water to a certain height or a certain place or maybe you want to get maybe water maybe 500 meters away or 600 meters away so if you don't have a big gradient or if the gradient is not maybe matching the, the max head this pump will always be able to take water to where it's needed but definitely it's always good maybe to have uh, advice if you're using purely for commercial use it's always good to have some advice from water engineers they will even calculate the head they will even calculate uh, maybe the, the the maximum head or maybe the flow rate that you'll get even without without having uh, maybe the curvature of uh, maybe a graph drawn because some some of these pumps will not have maybe that kind of uh, a graph shown they will even be able to calculate uh, the, the, the kind of pump that you'll be able to get but guys that's it for the demo we'll be doing uh, some other pumps bigger ones also the ones that need maybe several panels and uh, we'll be even doing some videos uh, on the pump so guys stay tuned and also subscribe subscribe so that you don't miss out on any other videos. See you.